Hello, my name is Tomasz Poszetek and in this video I would like to discuss a little bit the governance of the part of my desktop processes and to be really precise, the access, the permissions to uh, for other users to use the part of my desktop processes and to run them on specific machines. So now, once you create a new environment and once you grant users an access to the environment, so you do that by giving them the environment maker role, these users are automatically granted permissions not only to create new Power Automate desktop processes, but as well to register any machine that they can that they have an access to as a machine to be used by the Power Automate desktop to run the RPA processes there. And so there are two layers actually how we can allow users to not only run specific flows but as well to run them on specific machines, plus how to actually limit users from creating their own uh, machine registrations. Because once, uh, once user has no permissions to register their machine as the one where they can run the workflows, the, the RPA flows, then even though they would be able to create such a RPA, they won't be able to actually run it from the cloud on that specific machine. So let's start from the beginning. The first thing I wanted to show you, or maybe to remind you, is how you can actually share an existing desktop flow with other users in your organization. So once you navigate to My Flows and then, and then to Desktop Flows, you can then go into Details of any flow And under the shared with tile, click this manage access link. So this will open a window where you can actually grant new users to access your, uh, to, well, somehow interact with your uh, desktop flow. And now this can, this interaction can be done two levels. The first one is the user level, which grants user permissions only to execute that RPA. The second one is the co-owner and the co-owner grants that user permissions, not only to execute that RPA process, but as well to modify it, share it, and even delete it. So I'll share with Christine Trader this process on the user level. And so once I now navigate to Christine's uh, Power Automate portal and to her desktop flows, you can see that right now she has this um, RPA process present. However, she's not able to edit it or to share it. So the only thing she could do is to actually run it. But how could she run it if she has no uh, on-premises data gateway installed anywhere or if she has no machine registered? Well, you also have to navigate back to your portal as, let's say, the uh, administrator. And then under the monitor and machines, so this is this cool new feature that I was talking about in my previous video. I hope you liked it. Um, you can either find your machine under the machines or under machine groups. And here you have to share it because my machine is attached to a group. Therefore, I cannot share the machine uh, as, as a standalone machine. I have to share the whole group. So right in here, I can just select the group, then manage access. And from here, I can again uh, specify the user with whom I'd like to share that um, machine group. And here again, I can share um, this work, this uh, machine group with that user using the user permissions levels that this person is only going to be able to run their RPA processes on any machine from that group. Or that person could be a co-owner, so it, uh, they would get permissions as well to modify details of that group, add new machines, remove machines from that group, or even remove the whole group. So now this is up to us. Now, once I save it, um, then when I navigate back to Christine's uh, section with machines, she's now as well able to see that machine uh, that is in a test group. However, she only can go and see details of that machine and see which flows, which um, desktop flows were run on that machine. So with that, 
she could actually go and create her own Power Automate uh, Cloudflow that would be used to trigger her own uh, desktop flow, her own or the one that I just shared with her. So in here, uh, she's now able to actually uh, choose the new connection, select this uh, option to connect directly to a machine using this preview feature, then select the test group, and then simply define uh, the permissions, uh, user, user permissions, uh, user credentials that would be used to access that machine or any machine in that group to be even more precise, right? So this is how it works. <clears throat> now she's able to select this test of flow that was shared with her, or she can create a new one up to her. Now, what if you would like actually, now what if we would like to prevent that user from adding their new machines to the group, or well, not only to the group, but actually from registering any machines so that they can only use these registrations, these machines, which were registered by the admin. Because right now, by default, as that person is granted the env environmental maker permissions, or um, sorry, security role, um, this person actually is able to register their own machine. So um, she could now download the application and follow the, st the same steps as I was showing you in my previous video. So to prevent it, we actually need to navigate to uh, the Power Automate, this, uh, the Power Automate, uh, the Power uh, Platform Portal, Administration Portal. Then we need to go into the specific environment where we want to prevent users from being able to register their own machines. Then we need to go under Settings, and in Settings, first thing we have to do, or the first thing that we need to do is to actually modify permissions of the security role that is granted by default. So the environment maker. So Christian is environment maker. I'll now just edit this uh, security role. This you do, of course, in the legacy alt interface, the legacy old dynamics portal. And so here, what we have to modify is to navigate to custom entities. And under custom entities, there are two new uh, tables that are added um, after you first open the machine registration section in your PowerPoint portal. And they are called Flow Machine and Flow Machine Group. Now, as you can see, by default, uh, every user who is given that security role has permissions to do anything. So to create, to edit, to share, to delete, to well, whatever they can, there is, this is, this is present here. And so first we have to do is to actually turn it off. So we need to actually disable anything that is available for the user for both the flow machine and flow machine group tables, right? Save and close. So with that, once I navigate back to uh, Christine's, uh, Christine's Power Automate portal and refresh the interface, you can see that right now this person actually sees nothing, has no permissions to even see machines or machine groups. Not to mention that if I would like now to create a new machine or register a new machine or create a new group, uh, I would get again errors because that person doesn't have currently permissions to create anything in these two tables. So this is the first step. This step actually prevents anyone who is environment maker from creating anything in the uh, in the in that specific environment in terms of um, machine registrations. Now the second step that we have to do is again in the Power Platform Admin Center. There are three new roles 
security rules that we can use to actually uh, grant specific permissions for the users to work with machine registrations. So we have uh, a role called desktop flow machine owner, desktop flows machine user, and desktop flow machine user can share. The desktop flow machine user is the uh, security scope which allows user only to run desktop flows on the shared uh, machines or the shared machine groups. The desktop flow machine owners is uh, the security scope which allows everything to, I mean, which, which allows on everything. So to create new registrations, to create new groups, to modify existing ones, to update them, uh, to share them and so on. And then in the end, the desktop flow machine user can share is um, the permission that the security scope uh, that allows users who are granted this, uh, this one to actually share existing uh, machines and machine groups. So right now what I want to do with Christine is I want to actually uh, grant her this security scope. So now Christine is given this permission. And then if I go back to her uh, Power to portal and then refresh it again, And so now she's able to see that machine. She's also able to, she, to see that machine group. She would be um, as well able to see the queue. So if there were any jobs pending for the execution, she would see what processes are waiting. Uh, she would be able to manage the, the order. So to uh, change execution order of those, of those queued processes. However, she's unable to create a new machine and a new group. So like if she tries to create a new group, uh, she has this kind of an error, so that the, the one that was present before. And then if she'd like to create a new machine, um, well, first I need to unregister this machine because this is all happening on, on, my, on my computer, on the same computer. So let me just first remove this uh, existing machine so that, so that she would be able to try and register it again. Okay. So now I'll sign in with her account. Okay, so she sees the, uh, the process that has been shared with her. However, she cannot edit it. And now once she navigates under settings and machine preview and machine uh, registration, she uh, cannot register this machine since this button is just disabled. And there is information that she doesn't have permissions to register this machine for uh, Power Automate. Uh, so, well, this is how it works. And with this uh, approach, you can actually not only um, have a better control over who is actually permitted to use Power Automate desktops to run these Power Automate desktops and where, but as well, who is permitted to create desktop registrations, sorry, machine registrations, um, and therefore control which machines are actually included in your Power Automate desktop processes so that everything is really under the administrator's control. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you have any questions, simply put them down in comments or try to contact me via social media. I'd love to answer to all of your questions. And well, until the next time, thank you for watching and bye. Oh, and remember to subscribe. Bye bye.